When he came out as an atheist, Saif al-Basri began to receive death threats. I often get sent free tickets to hell. Often they say, you'll burn, you'll burn for eternity, God will punish you, Satan has led you astray. Or, if I saw you, I would kill you. Muslims make up 5% of Germany's population. Before he moved here, Saif called himself a Muslim too. But while studying medicine, he began to experience doubts about his faith. The Islamic world is dominated by a kind of culture of intimidation. Neither God nor the faith is ever questioned. There are strict guidelines that have to be accepted. They aren't questioned either. And that's not on. I'm calling for independent thinking. Saif, who originally came from the Iraqi capital Baghdad, now considers Islam to be coercive. He blogs about his negative experiences. And his ideas make some Muslims uncomfortable. Okay, what would I do if my child became an atheist? He would hurt me. I wouldn't tolerate it, but I wouldn't punish him for it either. They'd have punished themselves enough already, you know. Killings and murder, threats like these have nothing to do with religion. That's the way to the devil, unfortunately. It has nothing to do with us. We're sorry for those people too. They're people who've been politicized and that damages us too. We're Muslims and we don't put pressure on our children. We pray, and I'd like to pass on the good bits which I learned from my parents and my faith. But if they don't go along with it, they're free people. The minority of Muslims who do send death threats to people like Saif base their actions on a message they attribute to the Prophet Muhammad. In the Islamic tradition, in Sunni and also Shiite schools of thought, someone who's abandoned Islam has three days during which he's called to repent. If the person doesn't return to Islam, then they're to be threatened with death. These days, that interpretation is controversial. Muhannad Kurkhide says it sends the wrong message. If we force someone to pretend to be Muslim just because they're scared of a death penalty, that would be teaching hypocrisy. That's not really in the spirit of the Quran. Mina Ahari helps young Muslims who want to leave Islam. She leads a group of 500 people who are critical of the religion. It aims to support young people, whether they want to quit Islam or convert to another faith. I'll always remember getting a phone call from a girl who said, I still wear a headscarf, even though I'm no longer a Muslim. But I haven't spoken to my parents because it's a really problematic issue. An estimated 10 to 15 percent of people raised as Muslims either no longer practice or convert to another religion. Many of them don't tell their parents or family. Their own friends and family are a major source of their fear. They're scared of being disowned. It took Saif two years to muster up the courage to tell his family that he had lost his faith. Their reaction was not what he had expected. I was surprised that my uncles, who were really strict and conservative, initially accepted it. They were surprised, of course, too. They tried to have a discussion with me, which I think is a positive sign. However, they did patronize me on an intellectual level, claiming that Satan had misled me, and that's why I am now cursed. They've now come to accept his point of view. Saif hopes one day the people sending him death threats will do so too. In that respect, his faith is strong. <laughs>